What's up? In today's video, I thought it would be super fun to bring my husband on and have him share his experience investing because when I met him, he was not investing on his own at all. So I just thought it would be cool to hear from a beginner like back in time. And also so you can see kind of our process of working together on our investments. So let's go back in time. So my husband and I started dating about six years ago mm -hmm. or so. And when I met him, I was a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley, and I was all about finding out people's numbers right away. I think it was our first or second I think our date. second date, we went over like our, how much we made. <laughs> I think I asked you to bring your statements. So he yeah. was invested in his work <clears throat> retirement plan. Right. He just didn't have anything outside of that invested, but he did have some money. And I was interested in starting to invest. So that's why, and then I showed you how much money I had sitting in the bank, just doing nothing. Yeah. And that's where it started. And it was around 70,000, right? About 70 grand, yeah. And I was like, ah, yeah. what? And I remember you started me off really small. I was like, oh, let's buy $1,000 of these like three stocks. I forget what, the, what they were, but it was like, now looking back on it, <laughs> wow, it wasn't that much. It may have totaled a thousand dollars. It was like a share of this, a share of this, just to get me started. That was good, right? Yeah, get totally. It. One of the early agonizing things was stressing over $200 worth of stock. If it gained $10 or it gained, you know, <laughs> $15, like, like, oh, poop, I'm losing money, oh, way, <laughs> yay, I made $20. And it was great at the time just to get, get started, but yeah. it got me used to the ebb and flow of the market. Yeah, so what do you think it was that kept you, why did you have all that cash? Why weren't you investing? Um, fear, just not, not knowing, ignorance. It felt so difficult. I really didn't know what a stock was. I knew you could buy a stock, but I didn't know what a stock was, what a mutual fund was, what a four, really what a 401k was. All these terms made it fearful for me to get started in something I just didn't know. And from somebody who likes to put his money where, when I know what is expected, since I was so fearful of what to expect, I just didn't, didn't do anything about it. And my husband is a smart guy. He's, <laughs> when I met him, he was director of international scouting for a baseball team. And you don't get to that position by like not knowing things. And that's the thing with new beginners. A lot of times they feel kind of dumb or feel like they should know this thing, but you know what you know. And like, he's very specialized in baseball. If I tried to do anything baseball related, I would feel like a dummy, <laughs> but it's okay if you don't know things when it comes to investing because how would you know unless you actually get going and start investing so I thought it was really cool that you were open to it and I do remember you being hesitant to put it all in and I yeah. think that's why we started yeah and that helped me realize people can't just put all of their savings into investing even though that would probably get you the most the quickest long term because you have a lot invested but it's terrifying yeah I kept the ton of it in cash, ton of it in cash still because I, w I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And the more you taught me about what to expect and the ebb and flow of it and me actually getting into it and seeing what the daily fluctuations were and the expected return of, you know, 7% on the, the standard, you know, once I got to know the numbers, I was like, okay, this is, this seems like a pretty safe bet to keep going up. Yeah. and to make money on this. And I was looking to get into it and I just happened to met a financial <laughs> advisor, it was great. <laughs> yes, and he actually had way more money than me at that time. I had just started to make decent money and I was working on getting out of debt and all that stuff. So I didn't have anywhere near what he had. I had like $5,000 to my name probably. I'm older. <laughs> He's a little older. <laughs> so do you remember maybe one of the first big stocks you got into or a large lump sum that you started to so put in? I remember the, and this is uh, now knowing how it turned out, learning from failure. I knew there was a chance that the stock or the, I forgot, the, the Baker's Dozen, a mutual fund or a... Yeah, ETF. so there was a fund that I was really selling a lot because, well, one, it paid high commission and that's... <laughs> 
part of why I got out of that whole business because I didn't like to sell these high commission things. But, but it made a lot of money, right? For a lot of people. So. Yes. And not only did it have a high commission, it also was awesome. It was like best yeah. performing mutual fund for several years in a row. It was doing really good. It was a basket of 12 stocks that this company had picked. It was called the Baker's Dozen. And so at that time, that's what I was really pushing because their performance was amazing yeah. and way better than the S&P 500. So it was partially because I got paid well on that, but also it was really right. awesome. But so. And you got into it too, right? I a got into it. Yeah, so it made sense for me to also get into it. All the research was there to suggest that it was going to continue doing well. We just happened to pick the year that it didn't. Yeah. You know, so it went down. I, f I forget what the amount was, but because you taught me what to expect and what could happen. And hey, look, this is what the S&P does. This is what the Dow does. It was just was, okay, well, you took it. We took a chance. Boop. We failed at it. The other one really hit home was when I really got invested hardcore was when I bought Amazon, Google, Apple. Told me that Warren Buffett said, hey, invest in what you use. Well, I use Apple, Google, and Amazon yeah. a lot. And so I remember buying Amazon and I forget about $500 or something. It goes up to like $700 and I was like, ooh, I'm feeling good about myself. Then it goes down to something like 500 something, uh, sell out. And then it starts back going back up. It's like a $900 stock I remember <laughs> at the time. It's like, ooh, am I gonna do this? But I use Amazon all the time. And even the projections were not great, but, or not super high end, but I was like, I use this every day. Where, where's it going? It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people I know have said that, but Amazon just wasn't going anywhere. So I'm like, except for up. I just bought into it at 900 and then I bought into it more at like 12 and at 1500. Since then I haven't had the courage to buy more, <laughs> but that was one of the big ones. And then Google and Apple, I'm, it just felt like Google isn't going anywhere. Apple isn't, I use Google, pro, uh, Apple products every day. That's the majority of the, the bigger purchases of the stock. And mm -hmm. then, you know, there are some that haven't, that, that didn't work out that I still, that I, I traveled American Airlines a lot, bought that, That's, that hasn't worked out, but I stuck to buying those stocks because those were, that's what I used. And that's how it goes, right? When you're investing, some of the things are going to do well, some aren't. And the airline stocks, of course, tanked. They'll probably rebound really well. We sold most of those because we needed some cash yeah. to for the down payment for our house. So we used that for some tax loss harvesting because we also sold some gains. Gyms. I now know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's been really awesome investing together and kind of having that experience with you yeah. and then also maxing out the 401k and reconfiguring my stock plan for work investing in etfs the s p just putting it all on like not all of it but putting a lot of it in that because it's an expected return. So I like evidence-based, data-based stuff, and it just seemed like this is what it's gonna do. And I remember, I think it was a late 15 or something around that time when I put a lot of money into it, and all of a sudden, boom, it goes down like 10%. But since I knew you have taught me what to expect, well, I knew, hey, it's, it's gonna back, go back up. When he was talking about his 401k, I did take a look at that. He yeah. had a lot of bonds in there, and he's not gonna use this money for 10, 20, 30 years. So that's why we reduced the bond exposure, meaning like just lessened how much bonds were in there. And that's really helped with the growth of the portfolio as well, because we've got more stocks in there. And then what else do we do? Oh yeah, maxing it out. So you can contribute $19,000 per year into your 401k. And if you're not taking advantage of that and you've got the extra cash flow, it's a great way to reduce your taxable income yeah. and get more money invested for the long run. Right. I remember that the bond stuff on my work 401k was so high. We had talked about the S&P uh, ETF and all those ETFs that tracked indexes. Mm -hmm. And so it made sense to me, even though it's riskier, well, the bonds were too safe. Yeah. So it wasn't producing enough. So I figured, hey, this is what historically it's going to do this or yeah. more than likely it's going to it's going to it's going to do this, but it's going to end up here. So even through that time when it was like the I think the Dow was at 29 went down to 18 and now it's back up to I think like 33 or something he like that. He tracks the numbers yeah, so, like so good. So but it, yeah, but even through that. So right? <laughs> oh my God, you're so good. But even through that, I you had taught me that this is this is what it's gonna do so just just keep it in there not overreact and just trust that what this is what the market is going to look like and so that's what we've done not fretting too much about 
the ebb and flow. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing with me. I My just wanted pleasure. to give you guys some encouragement. You know, we all start somewhere and <laughs> take a look at our portfolio that we've built because it re is really <laughs> awesome and something that we are proud of. And but also it started at a very small amount, you know, yeah, it started it and then it's just escalated. So that's why I'm so passionate about helping others learn to invest and get started in the market. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Remember to subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.